Hi, welcome back to video two in our Retire on Less Money, Less Risk, and More Income series. Let's take a look at averages, or as I call it, the flaw of averages. A lot of times we refer to averages or reverse dollar cost averaging. I just want to show an example. Um, how an average number could mean different things at different times. In this example, we have a deposit of $100,000 and the 10-year average return is 6%. And your withdrawal rate is 6%. So very simply what this means, you put $100,000 in and I use the term a CD and I know a lot of folks will email me, Joe, what bank is paying 6%? And I go, it's just an example when I'm using the $100,000. So basically, it's simple. Uh, you put $100,000 into a CD. At the end of the year, you get $6,000 worth of interest or 6%. Uh, and you can take out the $6,000 and you'll still have the $100,000 left. So what that means is simple. As we take our interest out, our principal stays the same. Very simple, very understandable, but let's take a look at what happens. If we turn around and we do it the next year, we get 6% interest, we take out $6,000, we still have an ending balance of $100,000. So the concept here is that we can continue to do this forever as long as the interest rate stays at the 6% level. Now, it depends on how you average to get 6%. The next example is going to show you the same average return, but gets very different results. In a situation like this, we're talking about an investment of some type where there could be some fluctuations. We, st we have the same $100,000. And I want you to look with me at the next line. The 10-year average return is what? It's still 6%. And we're going to attempt to take out $6,000 out of that investment uh, at the end of each year. Uh, so if you look at year one, you're going to find a very um, bad year. It was a minus 30%. The account went down, but you took out your $6,000. And you got your balance of $6,400 or the 6,000 came out and your balance was $6,400. So what's going to do is next year you go in there to get it out again. You still have, have a minus 20%. Uh, you take out your $6,000. It's $45,000 is your balance. Now years three, four, five, six, seven, and eight go back to the strong 10% growth. And in year nine, you got a 20% growth and a year 10, you get a 10% growth. But I want you to look at the balance that we get at the end of the 10 years. It's now no longer at $100,000. It's at $38,898. The difference is that it almost it reverts a lot back to the sequence of returns that we went over in the last video. But it shows that on a more simple example that taking money out of a 6% return will get you the six thousand dollars a year out of the, from the hundred thousand but it could rapidly rapidly deplete your principal now let's look at an average return as far as a percentage goes and, and this is why a lot of folks will get confused as well uh, back in 1999 you really could be the old saying is a blind squirrel could find an acorn at that point uh, that you couldn't have done anything wrong in the market. Everything was making money. This particular fund was Van Wagoneer's mutual fund. In 1999, it had a massive return of 291% increase. Uh, if you had vested in that, uh, you were looking, you looked at yourself as I'm the smartest investor in the world. Back in 2000, if you remember, we had a little bit of recession, uh, the tech bust, uh, we had some uh, money went down. It was a 20% loss in year, in year 2000. 2001, it went down another 59%. 
and in 2002 it went down another 59.9 percent so what we're going to look at let's just do some quick averages we have a gain of a 291 percent we have those losses and if you do the math it comes out to 150 percent gain so let's divide that gain by four years and we're going to find out that uh, you divide it and we're going to get 37.65 percent gain that's not bad is it but let's put some numbers to it so we started with a hundred thousand dollars that money grew by the end of 1999 to three hundred and ninety one thousand dollars it dropped by the 20 so it went down to 309 the next year it had a loss of 59 percent of 124 thousand and in 2002 it had another almost 60 percent drop it went down to 50,000 so the point I want to make here is pretty straightforward started huge number went down a little bit went down a little bit again and finally down to the fifty thousand dollars so I'm a little confused what happened we had total gains of 291 percent we had total losses of 140 the net gain should have been 150 and you divide it by four years it's 37 percent but the real story is the account lost half of its value it started at 100,000 was worth about 50 what's important is that when I use the term mental math we look at things oh it's got these returns we do some simple math when you apply numbers to it it becomes very very difficult so let's look at this example straightforward a hundred thousand dollars or I'm sorry it's a thousand dollars in an investment it grows the next year 20 percent then drops 20 percent then it grows 40 percent and then drops 40 percent what should the gain or loss be it should be zero right it gained 20 lost 20 gained 40 lost 40 it should be a zero gain but let's put numbers to it we're gonna see the actual dollar amount started at thousand dollars the 20 percent gain brought it to 1200 the 20 percent loss brought it to 960 the third year gain brought it back to 1344 and the fourth year loss brought it to 806 so here's the question by looking at it quickly mathematically you say hey wait a minute it was a wash but in this case you had an actual loss of about 20 percent of that hi let's take a look at an example using an IRA um, IRA balance uh, on 12 31 of 2015 was a hundred thousand uh, dollars and we're showing a 10 percent RMD um, there there are seven and a half so they got to take the money out uh, now uh, the 10 percent is a little bit higher than your normal RMD but in this particular case the person needed extra money wanted it whatever the reason was they just took out a little bit more so they took out the 10 percent uh, and that was taken out in 2016 now very simple math will tell you had a hundred thousand dollars you took out 10 percent which was a, a you know ten thousand dollars and your balance is ninety thousand dollars now here's the thing that's very specific or it's a quirk uh, with IRAs and 401ks and all type of plans um, we're going to add a market correction in there of, of 20 percent so we're looking at the current value of eighty thousand dollars and not the hundred thousand dollar value so when you take out your 10 percent withdrawal the 10 percent is based on the hundred thousand dollars that's the quirk not the current value of eighty thousand dollars so what happens there the decline and the withdrawal have substantial negative impact on that money so you've got to be very careful in other words when you're using money that's coming out of an IRA it has to have a floor set to it so you have the new balance of eighty thousand um, dollars the RMD came out of ten thousand uh, dollars that leaves you with a seventy thousand dollar balance uh, in the IRA what we're looking at I think is pretty straightforward and if the market dropped um, that percentage it's down to 80 or 20 percent uh, what do you need to get back to the full ninety thousand dollars you need a growth of 29 percent in that value to get back up to 
where you would have been, which is the $90,000. Now, again, you've got to be very careful when you're taking money of forced distributions. Uh, you've got to have some kind of a floor inside of your IRA to protect yourself. But I always like to kind of joke with the folks, and I ask the question, you know, what does the initials IRA stand for? And I basically tell them, it's no, it's not an individual retirement account. It's basically an internal revenue account. When using the floor of averages, um, let's use, in this case, real life historical numbers and not just hypothetical numbers. We're going to look at three generations, grandpa, his son, and his grandson. They all had a similar amount of money and they're all going to retire at different times. This is going to show what a normal distribution curve or a line would be if you had an investment and it did an average return based over those 30-year period that we're using in the example. This particular case started with $100,000. As you can see with the arrow around age 80-ish, it starts to peak. Then it starts to decline as life expectancy gets into the 30-year mark. So by looking at this curve, you would assume that your money should last, if you had a million dollar portfolio, it should last at least the 30 years. What we're going to do is plop grandpa right into a retirement. And we're saying that he retired on January 1st of 1929. And if you look at the red line that's showing that same distribution curve that the money should last, but in actuality, the dark line with the box is showing that he ran out of money by the time he was just, I guess, about 74 years old. Now, let's look at the son. The, sh the son becomes broke after 13 years. Now, we're using true historical numbers. If he retired on January 1st of 1966, as you can see there, the money didn't make, uh, probably, I guess that's about 77-ish or so, 77, 78 maybe. At that point, he was broke as well. So what happened? The red line is still there, but it's showing an actual, actual happening with the true returns that if he retired on January 66. Now, let's look at the grandson. The grandson is broke in 12 years. If he retired on January 1st of 2000, again, that red line is showing the distribution curve uh, that the money should last a lifetime. But in this case, he's broke in 12 years. By 2011, he has run out of money. This is the end of video two. Let's do some quick highlights of what we learned in this section. In this section, we went over the floor of averages. We showed a CD earning 6%. How you average a return to get 6% is very important. And we contrasted that to an investment with a 6% return. We also went over what is a gain or a loss chart, did some mental math with that. We talked about IRA distributions and how that little market correction can make a huge difference in your RMDs. And then we applied some real life numbers to three generations of retirees. Hi, I want to congratulate you on finishing section two of your video series. Again, I want to stress if you have questions, make sure you take advantage of the Q&A, uh, review your handouts, and you always have the chance to go back and review the video as we go forward. I'm very excited, uh, looking forward to seeing you at the end of uh, part three. Thank you very much.